Hi, my name is Dave Howells and I'm the owner of BC Bike Fit. And what I've decided to do is put together a four part video series on how to fit a mountain bike. It's gonna to touch on most of the fundamentals so that you can begin to get a foundation set up for your mountain bike. Uh, but before we dive into that, I think it's important to understand the history of the sport a little bit and why there's a lack of good mountain bike fit protocol out there. When we compare mountain bike fit to road and triathlon, it's really sort of lagging behind. There's so much uh, information about road and other types of fit, but not so much the mountain bike. And I wonder why that is. Well, let's just look at the history of the sport really quickly. It maybe started to get going around the mid 70s, late 70s, and I wanna say our first production mountain bike kind of showed up almost around the early 80s. So we're in and around 40 years, a very short period of time for some extremely fast and rapid evolution. All aspects of the sport have evolved enormously, even looking at trail design, trail maintenance, from IMBA to local uh, trail building organizations that uh, ultimately add a lot of structure to a certain area from green, blue, black, from trail forks now efficiently mapping areas. There's so much that has evolved with just trail design itself. The other aspect, of course, would be the rider. How to ride a mountain bike. When I first started back in the 80s, there was no instructors or teachers around to really show me the right way to do things. Now there's PMBI, there's instructors and coaches, there's all kinds of clinics that you can take. There's an enormous amount of information on skill development now, which is great. The other one, of course, would be the mountain bike itself. I just mentioned we really kind of got going with our first production mountain bike in and around the first 80s. This is a uh, hand-built Tom Ritchie over here, um, which I think in many ways really emulates the uh, the old school mountain bike that everybody was ripping around on in the early years. By design, it really wasn't the best. There was a lot of things over here that weren't great, but it's all we had and it got the job done and we had a lot of fun riding them. By comparison, fast forward almost 40 years, here is the modern day mountain bike. This is a 2018 Rocky Mountain Instinct BC edition, which I think really emulates the sport and where it's at right now. And when I compare these two bikes, they're completely different. Other than the fact they have a frame and brakes and wheels, they've, they've got similarities, but on so many levels, they're just completely different. So this is why I think there's a lack of really good foundational information because the sport has really changed so fast in such a short period of time. So what does mountain bike fit involve? Well, there's a lot of things. Really, when we go to looking at road and triathlon, we always talk about performance and efficiency and riding injury free and all these good things. It's no different with the mountain bike. We still want to be comfortable. We still want to be able to produce performance and be efficient on the bike when we're pedaling it. Um, one of the big things that I think is important, we want to stay safe and have fun. I think having a safe ride and a fun ride is probably the reason why most people ride mountain bikes. And the other big one, of course, is going back to performance. We need to talk about handling a lot, especially where I live in British Columbia. The trails here are very technical and we need a bike that can handle really well so that we can ultimately navigate safely down a trail. So what we're gonna do though to kick things off, uh, this is the first video of four. I'm also gonna be covering feet, that would be cleat positioning and all kinds of good information about the feet, saddle, height, fore aft, all that good stuff. And then we're gonna be getting to handlebar assembly, cockpit setup. But before we get into that, I'm just gonna pull, pull my Rocky out again. What I wanna to talk to today is the frame. I'm just gonna start with the frame design. I think if we can understand the frame, which I believe is the heart and soul of any bicycle, you can begin to understand how to set up the bike more effectively. And what we're gonna be doing is jumping into a video that was put together uh, by Rocky Mountain for me, and it talks about modern day mountain bike frame design and long, low, and slack. So Ken, we've got a 
sort of a geometry chart up of a frame. Maybe you could just point out a few key things and what we're looking at here. Um, so when we talk about the long, low, and slack phenomenon, um, the long refers to the reach value, which is this horizontal distance between the center of the bottom bracket and the center of the head tube. The low refers to the bottom bracket drop um, and um, the bottom bracket height that results from that. Um, and that bottom bracket drop is basically the distance from the horizontal line between the two axles and the center of your bottom bracket. And then the slack would be the head tube angle, which is the angle of um, your head tube on your bike um, where your fork is fitted up. Um, and that's an important number to consider as well. Awesome. Thank you. So Ken, because of the kind of long slack, lower sort of bikes that we're building, how has that influenced the cockpit and maybe even rider position? Well, along with the long, low and slack um, movement, um, we're also going with the steeper portion for the C-tube angle. Um, the steeper portion really is um, to get your weight more centered on the bike when you're climbing. Um, so with that, we're seeing um, innovation in seat posts where they're going to a zero offset head instead of uh, you know having like say 20, 30 mils offset to the rear. Um, it gives you a bit more stable climbing, puts more pressure on the front wheel. Um, with the longer reaches, the longer bikes, um, we've had to rein in um, you know the the cockpit set up at the front, so shorter stems. Um, play a big part in this to keep a uh, neutral position on the bike. So gone are the days of, you know, 50, 60 mil stems being more common on all mountain bikes. You know, this is going back 10 years. And now the norm, I would say today, is probably 40 mil stem. So the advantages of the shorter stem, again, it's positioning the rider relative to the front wheel in a more comfortable position to not pitch you over the bars. It makes up for these uh, bikes with longer reaches, so your standing position on the bike uh, will feel more neutral. Um, along with that too, handlebar widths have gotten a bit wider. I'd say that handlebar width, um, in terms of fit, is more relative to the per a person's um, body proportions, um, rather than an ideal position on the bike. Um, you know, if you got wide shoulders, long arms, a wider handlebar is going to feel better. Um, so there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer there. Um, with the stem length too, there's probably a 10 mil window of adjustment because um, it comes down to fit versus um, front wheel traction as well. And the, just your personal feel on the bike if you're too much weight on your, on your hands or not enough um, and so forth. Yeah. So to round things out, moving ahead, you know, um, what can we maybe see in the future? Do you like? Do you, do you feel like long low slack is here to stay, and this particular frame design has a lot of traction? We don't need to give any trade secrets out, but uh, what do you think the future of mountain bike sort of frame design is, and riding design generally speaking is? Well, I think the long low slack movement definitely has a, a lot of merit, and to the point where that type of geometry is moving down into the price point hardtails. Um, those price price point hardtails are generally people's first mountain bike um, and really if you want to give them a true mountain bike experience there's no reason to withhold um, you know that high performance geometry that we're putting into the more expensive bikes the more core bikes so um, as far as that geometry style is I think it has a it's here to stay it has a place on most of the bikes, I think you're, we're seeing a shift right now with uh, a new category, down country bikes, where you have, um, you know, cross country amount of travel, so between 100 and 120 millimeters of travel, but really aggressive geometry. And the reason for that really, you know, the, the short of it is that it just provides a more confidence inspiring position on the bike. Um, so it eliminates, um, you know, mistakes, and crashes, and um, yeah, it just generates a, a more positive experience. Yeah, so I think that the long, low slack has a place from top to bottom in on mountain bikes. Um, as far as 
where I see things going in the future. Um, you know, it's, it's tough to say because I really feel like we've reached the golden age of geometry. Um, there is a limit to how far we can push things based on, you know, the, our, our bodies and, you know, it's a sizing thing. Um, you know, we have to, one thing that's come to light recently is we've been, we've making, been making radical shifts in geometry. Uh, a lot of people have ignored uh, the effects on the effective top tube lengths as C tubes get steeper um, and uh, head tubes get slacker when you raise the handlebar, then your effective top tube gets quite short, so then the bikes start to feel small again. Um, so, you know, there's there's a bit more refinement to do, but um, I don't think things are going to get super crazy in the in the next probably three to five years. The most uh, out there example I've seen so far and uh, pink bikes you know, done this special project where they're like, you know what, forget about these small incremental adjustments, let's just make a bike that's totally out there in terms of geometry. And they've made it, looks very interesting. Um, however, there's a lot of bike fit compromises with that approach. Um, so I'm inter interested to see what the outcome is on their testing with that bike. Excellent. So uh, any final comments, anything in closing? Um, I'm just excited that, um, you know, I can have a small part in shaping the, you know, mountain bike geometry for the last, you know, nine years that I've been at Rocky. Uh, it's been quite fun and, you know, to be able to build bikes that, um, not only I want to ride, but I want to, um, have other people ride as well. So they have the same experience that I'm getting. Uh, it's been pretty rewarding and yeah no it's doubt it's been a fun journey no doubt hey thanks for your time today ken awesome stuff buddy no problem thanks for having me